Okay, so since there's very little information about this new plugin, Photon, Photon Pro Noise Reduction for Final Cut Pro X, um, I'm just gonna go through it and what it does and compare it a little to Neat Video, which is like the go to noise reduction plugin available. Um, the plugin is much cheaper, so it uh, is at 30 euros, I think, right now, whereas Neat Video is at a hundred dollars, something like that. So it's much cheaper and the uh, it does the same thing. I mean, uh, the installation is a little more complicated. If you download the program from the App Store, you'll have to start it manually like uh, this Photon Pro. Okay. And then click the install button. It's actually not that complicated. It's just an extra step that you need to be aware of. It's not in your uh, plugins list yet if you just downloaded it from the App Store. You'll have to install it first. It installs for the current user only. You can't do anything else. I mean, you can do it manually for every user, but that's how it works. Okay. Um, so uh, I have here I have a clip that I recorded of my son um, that is very noisy. It's been recorded with an old camcorder and in almost pitch black darkness. So you can see if I play through this, it's very noisy here. So this is a very tough situation for any noise cancellation plugin and I'm gonna go through it. Um, I have split this clip into two parts. The first one I applied the, um, the um, neat video, reduce noise. And to the second one I applied the Photon Pro noise reduction. Um, so the neat video plugin I'm gonna use in one way and one way only. And that is uh, with the auto profile that, um, yeah. I, actually, I'm probably gonna have to delete this because I did some things before. So, uh, reduce noise, there we go. So this is the reduce noise plugin. And you have to click here, just like to open, and then this neat video window window pops up. And what I'm gonna do is just click on auto profile because that is kind of what the other plugin is doing. You can't do a lot yourself. So this is uh, the area it picks. So this is this is a really terrible image to do noise reduction on because uh, there are not many areas that should be even and should not have any structure in them. Uh, this is the one that. Uh, the automatic function picked. So I'm gonna say yes, please use that as a noise reduction. And you can have a preview here in this window. You can even like make a small window and carry it around and see what it does. And it's doing a fairly good job. So the, the area I picked wasn't that big or that great, but it actually works fine. You can see there's a lot of noise reduction here compared to uh, the outside of this window. <clears throat> Also does a fairly good job keeping the edges of my son here uh, the way they're used to. It uh, breaks down a little in this area down here. You can see there's a lot of chromatic noise left here. Uh, this is to be expected because, I mean, it's a terrible recording, honestly. I would not use this probably if I didn't have to. So. Uh, I'm gonna keep this in the, the standard mode, not the advanced mode, um, it w which makes things much easier and has the same amount of controls that the other plugin has. So there's luminance, chrominance, you can just say, I want a little more cor correction in the luminance part, and you can see that the image, get, image gets significantly softer here. So uh, this uh, softens everything, including the, the edges to a degree. And what you can do a, a little post pro sharpen post processing sharpening with that. So this is kind of what, what I would do as a quick fix to get this running, right? Try to get the luminance and chrominance to a value that is suitable and that gets rid of most of the noise, and then just add a little sharpening to it. So this is probably what I would do, right? Looks very easy, looks very simple, and it does the job. I'm gonna zoom into 100% here. Um, this is the area I'm, I'm interested in. So you can see there's a lot of really weird noise here, but there's also uh, still edges that are visible and the, the noise has been reduced in most of the areas fairly well. Okay, so this is what the, the neat video 
noise reduction plugin does. Now let's look at the um, Photon Pro, the new Photon Pro noise reduction. Um, if I just put this, well, I'm, I'm going to start out fresh as well. No, I, this is actually pretty easy. I'm going to put this on there. There are just four, five things that I can actually change which makes things very easy. I mean, this is much easier to, to deal with than the complicated neat video one. So you have uh, the Luma noise reduction, which just determines how much of the uh, Luma values of the image, so the lights and dark, so the, the just the brightness of each pixel is uh, smoothed out. And then there's the chroma noise reduction, which just determines how much the color noise is reduced. So uh, you can see if I turn these down, completely. Uh, the bracking is uh, when, when handling is much slower than neat video, so <laughs> you have to wait for a long time, especially with my old laptop that I'm using right now. So you'll have to wait for a long time until you can see something. But uh, for the, the rendering times for this one and neat video are about the same. So if you take out the Luma noise reduction, you see this is a big problem. If you take it to like half, you can see how much it actually does. This is pretty good. I'm gonna take it to around 80, I guess. Mm, that looks fine. Yeah, and then there's the chroma noise reduction, which in this case is even more important. Like if I take that down to just 20 or so, you can see that there's a lot of chroma noise in the picture. Yeah, there's a lot of nastiness showing up here. So the chroma noise reduction, from what I feel when trying this out, is a lot better in the Photon Pro uh, than in the neat video noise reduction. The chroma isn't as good for, for, well, for the auto feature I used earlier. So if I take this up to 100%, um, the plugin gets rid of most of what's nasty back here. This is what it looks like. And then there's the uh, third one, which is the spatial radius. And the spatial radius just determines how much smoothening there is going on. So if I take this down, you'll see that there's a lot more detail left. Let's say take this to one. There's a lot more detail left, which of course also means that there's a lot more noise left. Yeah, so the, it gets a little grainier. For this particular image, I would actually go up to three because it just has a lot of noise and there's not much detail left anyways in the image. So you, I'll take that up to three. And then the fourth thing you can control is the spatial mask, which basically means that the plugin is looking for edges and then uh, not applying the smoothening and everything to those edges. So if I turn this off, you can already see that uh, the, the edges will get a lot, yeah, blurred like crazy. So you can actually tell how much, how much edge detection is in this plugin by just switching this on and off. So I'll turn it on again, which makes things much better and nicer to look at. Yeah. And then there's the temporal radius, which means that, uh, so the plugin will not only look at the current image, but at the images before and after this one to determine what parts of the image will stay the same and should not flicker and should not um, produce noise and which ones will change. So this is a, a well, kind of like an optical flow estimation for, for Final Cut Pro X. This would do a um, noise estimation, a temporal noise estimation. Three just means that the three images before and the three images after the current image will be looked at. Now, if you take this down to one, you'll see that the noise gets a little worse, but the plugin obviously gets a lot faster. So maybe take this to two. Um, I've noticed that the plugin has some serious problems if you take this up to five, the maximum, or down to zero, the minimum. It just produces weird looking images. I can actually show you if I take this to zero. This is what it looks like. So um, there's some bug in there still. If I take it up to five, not only does it get really slow, yeah, it doesn't show anything right now. Although this clip is actually a lot longer than five images. So there should be five before and after this one. So uh, the current <laughs> way is to just keep it somewhere in the middle at like three images. So this is all you can do with a Photon Pro noise reduction.
Now, if you compare this to what Neat Video produced, if you look at this image roughly, like here, and I want to go down there as well, look at this one, look at the edges here in the front, and if you do the same thing for the Neat Video, um, you can see that Neat Video smoothens out the skin a little more and reduces the noise fairly fairly well in this area but the edges are not as sharp so right here the edges are not as sharp and yet still here in the back of uh, my son's head and here in the back uh, the noise is not reduced as much so the detection which parts should be reduced noise and which shouldn't is a little clunkier and uh, here down there there's a lot of extra noise going on which you wouldn't want to see. I mean this really distracts in your image. So uh, with the auto feature I would say that the uh, Photon Pro noise reduction is actually a lot easier and a lot better which with what it does. Now of course if I go into this uh, re this this neat video reduce noise plugin and I take a look at it manually and I just say that yeah I want to add another noise profile back here because this is just grass and should actually kind of also work continue building profile yes and then I'll take another another one right here in the front auto profile yes and then I also look at the advanced mode I can see that this well the red channel is still has some some tricky issues so I'm gonna try to find another image where it maybe has a lot more um, a better way to see things oh, this actually doesn't move a lot so I'm still gonna open this <laughs> So there's some very bright areas missing. Um, I'm gonna check this is a very very small area here but I'll at least try to give it a load. No, it doesn't work. Um, doesn't want that. Maybe this one here. Yeah, it produced some more red ones. Um, I think this is it. We should do some more. Okay, so now if I go into this a little more manually and I just say that here in the back this one should be reduced a little more, then I just say that the noise levels and especially chroma uh, in the high frequencies should be reduced a little more and I'll just take those up a notch. Um, Okay, so I'm not going to go into this too deeply, but you see you can actually get those areas here in the back and down there a little better if you go into it manually, but this takes a lot more time and a lot more experience with the advanced settings of the uh, Neat Video Pro plugin. So, um, overall I have to say that the Neat Video plugin is of course the, well of course, not of course, it's of course the more flexible one. So uh, you can do a lot more things with it and you can tweak a lot more fine fine things with it. But uh, for the price, the Photon Pro plugin actually does a lot of very good corrections. So it's very slow, you'll have to wait a long time, but the rendering itself is not slower than for the Neat Video plugin from what I've tested so far. And uh, there are just five sliders or one, one checkbox and four sliders that you can uh, adapt so this makes it very easy to, to handle and very easy to understand what each slider does. It's not that hard to uh, get a grip of how this works. So I would actually, if, if someone asked me, I want a quick fix for some grainy footage, I would actually recommend them to get the Photon Pro plugin because it's cheaper and it's way easier to handle. If you want to get serious with things and if you want to get as professional as possible looking results, then uh, the Neat Video plugin is probably the way to go. I mean, it's not a surprise that this is the industry standard or the most used plugin I know of. Um, 
yeah so this is this is my first opinion on the photon pro plugin it's actually quite impressive and maybe the explanation of what each slider does actually helps some people because there's no information and this is this is my biggest issue with the plugin there's so far there's hardly any information online on how this works and what it does so i'm gonna upload this just to make sure that something is known okay thanks for watching and